Nobody really knows. President Trump this morning while in Poland saying nobody really knows whether Russia hacked into the U.S. election, engaged in meddling during the campaign season. That is not what his own intelligence agencies say. Joining me now to discuss, plus the other news that President Trump made during his morning so far in Europe, Democratic Congressman Ted Lieu of California, a member of the House Foreign Affairs Committee. Congressman, thanks so much for being with us. First, your reaction to what we just heard. Nobody knows for sure. Well, thank you, John, for your question. Let me first say my thoughts and prayers are with my colleague, Steve Scalise, who was readmitted to the hospital in a serious condition. Uh, now, to answer your question, anyone who has seen the classified information, as I have, knows that the president is not telling the truth when he says no one really knows if Russia engaged in this cyber attack against the U.S. last year. Russia did it. There is no rational person who's looked at evidence and concluded otherwise. So one of the people who looked at the evidence uh, was then President Obama. Uh, and President Trump made a point of saying, quoting, in fact, from that really telling Washington Post article, uh, which had members of the president, President Obama's own staff, saying that they thought that they choked with this intelligence. Listen to what President Trump said this morning. And he did nothing about it. They say he choked. Well, I don't think he choked. I think what happened is he thought Hillary Clinton was going to win the election. And he said, let's not do anything about it. A fair criticism, Congressman, that President Obama had seen the intelligence you're talking about right now and didn't do more? Yes, that is fair criticism. I wish President Trump didn't do this on foreign soil. But I do agree with President Trump that President Obama did not do enough uh, to raise the issue of Russian meddling in our elections last year. The Obama administration absolutely should have done more at the time. Hmm. Okay, let's move on to some of the other things that President Trump spoke today. In the clearest terms yet, he condemned what he called the destabilizing activities by Russia. That was a pretty clear statement. Your response to that? I agree with President Trump, and I hope that at his meeting with Vladimir Putin, not only will he raise the issue of election measures, but also of Russia's behavior in other areas that are affecting U.S. national security. Russia should not be funding Iran's military. They should not be opposing U.S. interests in Syria, and they should withdraw from Ukraine. He mentioned uh, Ukraine, Iran, Syria. Those were things the president specifically discussed in Warsaw. So you guys seem to be on the same page on that front, Congressman. Am I reading that right? Yes, absolutely. And I hope that President Trump raises these issues with Vladimir Putin. And he needs to go in with a list of demands. Russia should be making concessions to the U.S., not the other way around, because Russia is the bad actor in many of these areas. All right. The other major issue on the president's plate right now, in fact, you know, the entire world watching the, the Korean Peninsula, North Korea testing an ICBM successfully, a, mis a missile that could potentially, in theory, reach Alaska, what is your assessment of the president's response so far? Just this morning, keeping the military option on the table. When I served on active duty in the Air Force, I was under Pacific Air Forces and U.S. Pacific Command. There are no good military options against North Korea. Any strike could lead to a massive war with over 150,000 Americans at risk and millions of South Koreans on the peninsula. So I oppose the administration's saber rattling with military force against North Korea. They need to do the one thing they haven't done yet, which is engage in diplomacy. Negotiate with North Korea. You know, the administration says they won't do that unless North Korea gives up its nuclear weapons. North Korea says it won't do it unless the United States agrees to stop doing military exercises with South Korea. Would you be willing to give up these military exercises with the South Koreans to get North Korea at the table? I'll be willing to have talks with North Korea before the administration contemplates going down the dark and bloody path of war with North Korea. They need to exhaust every available option and talking to North Koreans has to be one of those options first. But yet, yes or no, would you be willing to stop U.S. military exercises in South Korea as a condition for discussions? I would unlikely support that, but if we're going to go to war, then yes, I think we should have talks uh, with no preconditions. Congressman Ted Lieu of California, thank you so much.